Late in January of 1990, Chris and Kevin Bailey finally got a chance to take their five children on the ski trip they'd always dreamed of at a resort near their home in Ogden, Utah. We've always wanted to learn to ski together as a family. So I took off work and we loaded in the car and all went up to the, the ski resort. Okay. My husband wasn't able to go the week before, and so I was excited for Daddy to see what his kids could do. You know, he had heard all these fun things and, and how the children could ski so good and how the boys went off jumps, and it was just an exciting time. Skiing is a dangerous sport. Uh, you hear every day of people getting hurt, but it's so darn much fun. It's hard to not go. We had got our passes and proceeded down to the line. A couple of our children had already gone up. My husband was directly in front of me with my friend Colleen. We got into the lift. The gentleman helped me, and there wasn't anybody on Angela's side. But I thought, well, we've done it before. She'll be fine. And she got in, and her little butt just didn't get in the seat. And I thought I could pull her in, and the gentleman, I guess he didn't see that she didn't get in the seat. And we just kept going. I was heading away from the loading area when I heard the screaming. 18-year-old Sean Durant, a ski resort employee, went to see if he could help. Hold on! Hold on! I immediately turned around and said to the other lift operator I was working with to stop the lift. So we kind of evaluate the situation. I realized that she was, you know, too far up in the air for me to, to catch her, you know, to have her jump. You know, there's too much danger involved with it. I should have let go of her right at the bottom. But Mother's instinct was she'd get hurt. And the longer I held on, the higher we got until we was a good 40 feet in the air. It's just the most helpless feeling. I mean, having your daughter hang from your arm and know that you're the one that's going to determine if she's going to be hurt or not. I don't know, it's the most helpless feeling that a parent ever could feel. Hold on to mommy's boat, Ange. Hold on to mommy's boat. Angie that's cried for help. I, I remember her saying one time, Daddy, I'm going to fall. I tore my heart out, you know. There was nothing I could do. There was absolutely nothing that I could do to help. Hold on, honey. Go Family hold friend on. Colleen Kyes was on the same chairlift. And I saw Angela hanging there. My heart just broke. I mean, that must be terrifying to a child. Let alone a mother that's hanging on for dear life. I don't think anyone knew what to do. I mean, there's, it's a situation where somebody has to risk their own life to save this little girl. I could feel the stitches on the snowsuit ripping. And I could tell that I only had one strap left. I mean, here I had a child dangling from my arms. I didn't know how much longer I was going to be able to hold on. I had realized that, that there were stairways on the, on the lift towers. Just kind of put two and two together. And I just told the, the other guy I was working with to start the lift until it went up to the tower. Hold on now, get a grip, okay? Oh, oh, that's good. Oh, oh, stop the chair. I don't think you could see exactly where the chair was at. And by the time he stopped the lift, the chair had gone past the tower. I climbed up the stairs. I, don't, I actually only remember seeing two steps on the whole stairway. I didn't think of anything. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I, my intentions were, and nothing else went through my mind. Kevin could see Sean climbing the tower. My daughter's life was in the balance. It was somewhat of a comfort to know that there was someone that was physically able to help. I felt this boy must have either a lot of guts and no fear, or he must be acting out of love for other people. I, I didn't know this boy. Why would he risk his life to save Angela?
when Sean scooped up Angela, we just kind of hugged and I thanked him and I don't think you can have enough love for a person who's risked their life for your life. And I saw him lift Angie up into the chair and saw her little behind snuggled into the chair. That's when I knew everything was okay. I don't know that there's many people that would do what Sean did. I think it's a, a real act of, of selfless love, if you will. I think he was, um, he's a very courageous young man. I sat there for a minute going, you know, I can't believe I did this. And I had to take moments to take a long breath and kind of relax after what I'd done. It's an awesome experience. When we got up at the top of the lift, I don't really remember getting off. I do remember standing with our skis off the chairlift. And I remember crying and hugging my husband. We all hugged each other and Chris kind of fell to pieces. I think that's when the realization of what had happened really hit Chris. My friend, Colleen, looked at me and she said, Christy, settle down. She says, remember, your little girl's watching you. And so we kind of settled down. And I said, Angie, you want to go skiing? And she said, yeah. We talked as we went down the mountain. And she looked at me and she said, Mom, I don't want to get on that chairlift again. And I said, honey, neither do I. So we'll do it together. We'll get on that lift together. And we um, had a, to go on the lift, and my mom said um, my grandpa fell off of the horse, and um, he had to get right back on it. Some people in this life are, are watchers. They sit and watch, and there's people who are doers. And thank heavens that Sean is a doer. I like Sean because he's neat. To save someone's life is probably one of the best experiences you can have because you have that to fall back on the rest of your life. To know that you did something worthwhile in your lifetime. Next, when you can see her trying to hang on with her front paw.